everyone. We have a new video that we are going to do one of these sessions live and without cuts. In this case, with Sarah, my favorite model from Madrid. It's spectacular, and since I have it in Barcelona these days, I'm taking the opportunity to create some content with it. We are going to take some small photos that will be useful for both your portfolio and mine of implicit nude fine art, and we are going to do it with natural light, okay? Once again, to work with natural light, we have to take into account a series of important things, unlike what we usually work with when working with artificial light. In this case, I have a very nice light that comes from this large window in the new studio and that creates a very nice gradient in that area of the wall. I, I will put a series of plants and we are going to play with that. But to do this, I first have to find an exhibition. Look. If I put the camera very close to Sarah, don't be scared, Sarah, a little bit close. I'm going to bring the camera closer to Sarah and I'm going to look at her face, the most illuminated areas of her face. What I'm going to look for is basically that the exposure meter is giving me between plus 0.3 and plus 0.6, okay? which is to look for that point where we have a zone five and a little bit, a little bit below a zone six, which would be Caucasian skin, so that precisely their skin looks well exposed. Now she has a lot of freckles, so I know, but I'm gonna play a lot with the contrast of the light to try to make them look even more. So once I have this exposed, I am right now at 320 ISO 402.8. If I take a photo of any Sarah, a portrait, you will see that we are going to see how the light on her face in the most illuminated areas is perfectly illuminated. If we look in detail at the photo, you can see how the transition from light to shadow creates what we know as contrast and corresponds to that side light that we have coming from the window. So in the end, what we have to do is keep in mind that when measuring the light, which we measure it like this with the meter of the same camera when we work with only natural light, we have to make a specific area. We cannot do it anywhere on your face because obviously the light that reaches this side is different from the light that reaches this side. What I recommend is that if you have a situation with a lot of contrast like this, you look a little for the part, not the most illuminated, not the hot spot, but the medium high illuminated area, so to speak. In this case, the light is very diffuse because we do not have direct sun through the window, but bounced. And so we only have an area with light and an area with shadow, but we do not have a point that you say here we have a flash, here a medium light and here a shadow is fine. So anywhere on this side of the face, I can get my measurement more or less correct. And really don't stress too much. This helps us have a base to work on. Then obviously when we move, the light will change, but we will not have to touch the parameters because if she turns her back a little further, turn this way, that is towards here, the light that comes to this, on the other hand, it does continue to come from the window and he will continue to have that exposure. What happens is that the rest of his body is going to fall into the shadows, but that is what we want to happen. So you don't need to stress out a lot about it. This is not about being tremendously exhausted in the exhibitions. We also have a brutal margin of maneuver in post-production. It is about having a parameter that allows you to work on the sessions without having to worry about the technical data of the camera and without having to touch or pass. Well, if now I am at 2.8, now I go to 3.2, now I go like that. Because the idea is that we can connect with the subject, with the model, and we can work well and we don't have to be aware of the technical part, okay? That is the most important thing to be able to connect. Let's take photos. Then we're going to get behind the plants. In this case, Sarah is going to be placed in the middle. I have created two layers, one in the background and another a little more front. And what we are going to play a lot, because so that both she and I can use these photos on networks, we are going to have to work a lot to cover everything that is nipples, because basically on networks, we cannot publish anything with nipples, because in some social networks directly remove your photo, in other social networks, they greatly penalize your reach, which is why we are not interested. It's not about whether I like her nipples or not, what she likes or not. It's about the usability of the image, which is the purpose for which we make it. So uh, what I, I want to look for above all, I am working in medium format with a 100 megabyte Hasselblad X2D. And so what I'm going to look for above all is that point of blur. I'm going to be working at 2.8 with a lens that is an 80, which is equivalent to about 60 millimeters. And what I'm going to achieve precisely are very beautiful blurs. So what I want is to play at that, play at that point of blur and puzzle through plants. So what I'm going to do is above all, focus on focusing on Sarah's face and looking for plants that cover part of her body playing that. Um, and she will play with her arms too. And then, and on the other hand, what we have to do above all is work very well on the issue of body position because what we need to achieve is that his body looks as beautiful as possible. Look, we're going to take two photos. We're going to do a quick test so you can see it. Stand completely straight and your hands are right there so we can see the difference between a posed and unposed body. Here we have Sarah's body standing up. She's comfortable, she had a little weight on one hip. You can see the image, she is super pretty and her whole body is beautiful and everything looks very pretty. But notice how I can change the shapes of his body just by directing them in Photoshop, no liquefying or shit, okay? 
So we're going to put our hips over there. That's it, very good. And now we're going to turn our chest over here. That's super nice, just like that, just like that. And we're going to look at the same thing. A very similar photo. Focus on the face and a very similar photo, but rotating the shape of his body. So look, we are going to compare them very briefly so that you can see that the difference is abysmal in how their body looks. Notice how we have in one part in which she is completely frontal and another part in which she has her hips to one side and her chest to the other. There is a transition there, a curvature. Basically what we achieve is that her waist looks much smaller in this photo where she already has a twist than in the photo in which she is already frontal. It does not mean that the photos cannot be taken from the front or are not beautiful. But if what you want is to emphasize the sensuality, the shapes of a female body, looking for twists is what will give you the best results. By doing that twist that I do a lot, which is to place the part of the pelvis against the light and the part of the chest in favor of the light so that the face goes even more towards the light. What I achieve is to create many volumes on everything in the part of the ass, in the part of the waist and in the part of the chest and face. So look, if you are going to see it and directly because we are with natural light, you are going to see it directly with the camera. Stand with your hips facing there like Sarah was, thank you, and your chest towards me and turn your face this way. Notice how the more your face turns, Towards the window, more light enters her face and her face looks prettier and sweeter. Let's invert it from the hip to the arm. So let's just turn the chest this way and the head, which is further away when doing this. What I am looking for is to generate a lot of contrast in the part of his face and I have much less contrast in the part of his body. So what I'm sweetening is his body and not his face. And what I'm going to do is attract the viewer's vision more to the body than to the eyes. And that is what I want to avoid precisely with these photos that are sensual and not sexual. Okay, now let's start shooting. Those are super pretty. You're going to love them. Let's see how it goes, then I'll show you. Let's see, let's start with that thing we said now of putting your hips there exactly, and we're going to play this. Notice that I am sitting and I'm below Sarah. Why am I below Sarah? Because precisely what I want is for her to be empowered, for her to be superior to me. She inevitably having this position has to look down to look at the camera. Therefore, what I achieve with her is that you, the viewers, when you are seeing the photo, you are seeing Sarah from below and she is above. So she is dominating you. And so that gives her even more empowerment, apart from the whole issue of posing, of form, of the one who is surrounded by plants and is only focused, and the rest is out of focus. Everything contributes to creating that character, to her being the goddess that is there. And then with that, we get that result. If I normally... How tall are you, Sarah? About 60-something and she's on tiptoe and I'm about 80 tall and I start shooting normally, what I am inevitably going to do is take a photo where she is more dwarfed. And the Tibet may have its history, it may have an interest. Look here at the image, the difference between this one and the previous one. It may be of interest because depending on the purpose we are trying to achieve, shooting ourselves from above and making her look like, how would they tell you? It's like we're dominating her, she may have an interest. It can be very good to create that psyche in the viewer. For example, we are doing some erotic photography because if you want it to have more eroticism, the fact of domination has an erotic part and can help, but it is not what I am looking for in my photo session, in my series of photos with which I do the opposite. And that is something that I highly recommend that you take the shooting angle into account. Then obviously you can like it more, that there are more plants, less plants. That's another story, okay? Because I can also lower the height of the plants and achieve the same result. Come on, let's go there. And now what I want above all is to play with precisely those focus points and for her to be distracted there behind the plants. I'm going to get up a little, but not much. That's right there, perfect. Super nice, Sarah. Let's look this way. I'm going to try to enter between the plant channel. I'm eating the cable all the time. They're super pretty. Sarah has super pretty eyes. Also look with, can you raise your bottom hand a little bit? No, don't bend your elbow. Leave it hanging, but at half throttle. And when he looks at the camera and makes that half smile, that's it, that real half smile that destroys the camera. Focusing with a medium format camera is never as fast as with other cameras. And turn your chest a little more towards me, that's it. A little more, try not to put so much pressure on your chest with your arm. Perfect. Super pretty. Note that I am not touching any camera parameters. I'm just trying to frame it well. Communicate with her, let her know what I like and what I don't like. Turn your chest more towards me and don't press your chest with your arm, please. Super pretty. It's super pretty. And precisely what it is from having constant communication with her and having a way, for me, 
It's like when I don't stop talking to her, there's like a common thread between us that makes the session flow. When I stop talking to her, for example, when I talk to the camera, I'm breaking that thread, so I'm never going to get the answers. Better photos making a video like we are doing now than as if I were working with it for an hour without doing this, so that is also something to take into account. Sarah, come, let's look at these photos a little here to see what you like and what you like most about Posado. That is pretty. Did you like that one? Of course, but I you. <laughs> that? I like that point, that one, that one, that one. Look, what you're liking, I think, is there you are doing the typical position of the model, like standing up, like sticking out your back, ass and so on, and there you are doing the opposite, which is like hunching over a little, looking for a, a little less than that exaggerated model position. So what we're going to do, look, stand there, I'm going to give you a little trick for this. We're going to do that thing where we turn our hips over there. That's the chest as forced as you can over here, that's it then. A little less, a little less is worth it, and now once you are there, as if straining all your muscles, try to pull your back inward. That's right, not so exaggerated, a little less subtle, that is. And then don't forget, uh, at the same time, we have to stick out our butt, stick out our back, everything. And then at the last moment, we slouch a little like here. And that makes the clavicle come in. Don't, don't, don't exaggerate it. Otherwise, the clavicle will look very marked. That's right, it's nice there. Turn your chest towards me. Towards me, the chest. And he slouches, that's what. Raise your wrist a little. Perfect. We are going to change the arms, cross them a little in front, but downwards. They crossed. That's perfect. Go up a little. Perfect. <laughs> About hands to body. Perfect. Lower them towards the waist. Like we were like this, but instead of forward, closer to the body. For example, I turn my chest towards me a little. One of the things I miss most working with medium format is the focus on the face because precisely when I have, in addition to being able to forget about the parameters, because I am working on the parameters that I already know that the light is good and such, if I also have a focus on the face, I can completely forget about the technical part of the camera because I am constantly looking for the focus on her eyes, those eyes, those eyes. So if I get a good focus on the eye, I know that I have that connection with her and the viewer. So what I have to try to achieve is precisely that. We continue for the same thing, that is. Now let's try what we were doing. Raise your forearm to the nipple. Let's try crossing like this, but like this and downwards as if you had that waist. That's right there, perfect. And turn your chest a little. That is, turn your hips more and then turn your chest towards me. That is, we cover a little more. Perfect. Great, Sarah. Sarah is spectacular because she is super skilled at controlling her body. As soon as you tell him something, he knows exactly which muscle to move to get to what you want. And he does it really very well. Perfect. I, I think we have this. Let's now switch to sitting him on the floor. Let's do a few more. So to make these few, look, come salt me and tie her if you want in the meantime. What I'm going to do is simply remove the plant supports so that the plants are lower. Because if I sit it here, the only thing I'm going to see are stools and boxes. Okay, then I'm going to go down. I'm still going to remove this plant for a moment and I'm going to download this one from here and at first it's going to be the same. But it's a variation having it sitting down okay. I mean, it doesn't have much more secret. It's not going to be very different. In fact, I really like these, but let's look if we can get something also interesting there. Do you like it? You want to delete the image, but how are you like that? Okay, sit down. Let's test if the tether works. The, the light here is going to be a little different because obviously, obviously the light that enters her when she is up, she gets this light. When she is down, she gets less. So I'm going to have to re-expose. So I'm just going to look for that exposure. I'm going to approach Sarah. I'm going to put the camera very close to you. Do not panic. And I'm going to look for that exhibition that we were talking about. You see, now it asked me to go down a little bit, about two thirds of a step. Here I have Sarah's beautiful portrait. But look a little at that point, okay? And here I am going to get off a lot. Look, look, this photo I just took of Sarah, this is the blur of the medium format, which is incredible, spectacular. But even so, I can see the distortions that this lens is generating when working with an enclosed portrait. So it is hot out something that is tremendously 
unusable, but it is true that if I were going to make portraits of that type, I would probably mount 135 instead of the 80. But let's point out our knees a little more between them. Something like that? Okay. And now here we go to work those. Here what I want is to work closer because I don't want to put the pots in too much. So I have to try here better. They look a little nothing happens, but don't be exaggerated. I love how you lower your chin and look at me like you know from above, like trying to see me through the plants, how it gives you a very cool look. Very, very knowing. Move there a little and yes, or better you can try while you let your hips fall towards there. You can try to bend your body there a little bit. Okay, that's what you do. There, there, it looks nice. I'm going to try to find some point where I can see it through the plants, but very carefully. Okay, this is nice. I'm trying to put the plants in there to see through them, and I really like it. Let's look for something cleaner. Let's have a little plant, but not so exaggerated. Look towards the window. There, then super pretty. Turn your chest toward the window a little more. Don't put so much pressure on your chest with your arm. Super pretty. Lower your chin, look at me. Super pretty. A little trick that I have for directing that I learned recently because I continue to learn every day. And a few months ago, I was at Peter Harley here in Barcelona giving a course and I thought it was brutal. He always works with a tripod, with the camera on a tripod and to direct the model's head, he used the lens. I mean, I have always used my hand and I always tell the model, turn a little this way, turn this way, and I'm still doing it. But now I'm starting to do it. If you want to tell the model to turn ahead what you have to do or to look that way, you do this with the lens for a moment and the model immediately follows the camera. It's like super effective and I find it super interesting. I'm starting to put it into practice and sometimes I realize that I do it, but it's something that you have to internalize very well to do well. But think instead of directing with your hand, use the camera. So if I'm looking at Sarah, I'm not, I know if it's going to be seen in the video, but I'm looking at Sarah and I tell her that I want her to look at the window, something. So she looks at the window and then she automatically sees that the camera is pointing that way and she looks that way, so it works pretty much. Well, it's a little trick from Peter Hurley, a New York photographer. Look at me, Sarah, super pretty. We lower our hands down like we did before, that's it, and lie down a little bit towards me. That's perfect. Super nice, Sarah. I have a lot of foot, a lot of pot, but we will finish growing this. Let's see how it goes. I think we have it. I'm leaving a lot of negative spaces, as I tell you, because with so many plants and such, it's difficult. He must be in the peperas. It's hard to see what the final crop will be. I don't like... Now, when I'm looking, I don't like the pot. I don't like the leg, but I think we can crop parts perfectly. Uh, this is so beautiful loves. Oh, Sarah has that ability, as I say, to look for that smile that I really like, which is super pretty. I like this a lot. I think it's very beautiful. I see a lot of plant one. That is a lot of pots. Let's try an intermission, okay? Check it out. Let's try intermediate. We're going to leave the plants where they are and you're going to get high. Instead of sitting, instead of standing, we are going to try to be like this and we are going to play with the body. And I'm going to cut this. I'm just going to go half length, okay? Split the back. <clears throat> Let's see how it goes. A little more there. Perfect. Yes, I'm very tall. Let's, let's see if the stool goes down. What? Uh, perfect, I'm great there. Super good. Yes, yes, I like it. Increase, separate your knees from each other as if they are not symmetrical. That, and the other one like you had before. There, well, yes, turn it up a little more. Something like that. Okay, yes. Try to contour your hips there a little bit. That's it, and now eyes, okay, look at me. Well, focusing here is complicated because I have all the plants in the middle, super nice. Go towards the window. I have a lot of body of it. On the right side of the photo, I'm missing a little bit. I'm going, when you move the plant, you're going to fall, right? You'll wait. 
I'm going to try. I have to come as more crossed. I think I have to put the plant more here so that it is no longer so separated from the other plant. This is a little better. Let's make the other profile. Yes, perfect. You pose it as super strange, but in the photo it works. Lower your knee forward a little. Super, super good. Good, yeah. Let's uh, go inside. Don't be afraid to cut the photo, even if you cut things, cut knees, hands, heads, it doesn't matter. Once, oh, very close. That's perfect. Very good, Sarah. Uh, I have to be very careful with the focus because in medium format, it drops quickly and we would lose it very quickly. And I think the last photo, brilliant. Super good, I think so. Well, we already have three plans. Now it's a matter of reviewing them, seeing which of the plans is the one we like the most. If we like it more, this is cool. I think it has a cool vibe. See which of the plans we like more. If the ground, if standing, if in the middle of the body and finish deciding which is the area where she likes herself the most, where I like her the most for what we are trying to achieve and repeat and repeat, repeat on it. That is to say, make a little more of that part. So I'm going to stay with it, taking a few more photos and we'll show you the final result. If you have any doubts, any questions, comment below and we'll see you in the next video.